The third event of 1917 that inflamed pre-millennial passions was the Russian Revolution of 1917. According to dispensational doctrine, Russia was identified with Gog of Magog as leading a great northern confederacy against Israel during the seven-year tribulation. In the end, this invasion force would be destroyed by God. How could Russia be the Gog of Magog described by Ezekiel when Tsarist Russia was historically a Christian nation aligned with the Russian Orthodox Catholic Church? This perception would change in 1917 when Tsarist Russia was deposed by Bolshevik communists, a decidedly atheistic government in Russia, the picture of a Russian Gog of Magog became clear. 1917 saw three major elements line up on Schofield's script. World War, a future state of Israel, and a communist Gog of Magog. Pre-millennialists were giddy with excitement. The decades between World War I and World War II constantly reaffirmed the pessimistic worldview of premillennialism, the laissez-faire attitude of the Roaring Twenties, and the Scopes Monkey Trial of 1925 only solidified premillennial opinions. The Great Depression of the 1930s came along and pre-millennial pessimism grew again. New candidates for the Antichrist throne surfaced during these decades. Dispensationalists saw the Antichrist in Mussolini, Hitler and Stalin, and the League of Nations. The leading contender for the Antichrist title was Mussolini, who envisioned a revival of the old Roman Empire. World War II ended the Antichrist expectations of Mussolini and Hitler because they died. World War I and World War II saw the national boundaries of Europe being redrawn, and this geopolitical change fired off another wave of dispensational excitement. The revival of a ten-nation confederacy in Europe described in Daniel chapter 2 was now plausible in dispensationalist thinking. An image of a man with two feet and ten toes made with a mix of clay and iron that will be destroyed by God who will set up his kingdom. This is powerful apocalyptic imagery set forth by Daniel in the second chapter of his book. But how should this image be interpreted? This is the question that has tormented theologians for nearly 2,000 years. How could this one chapter in the book of Daniel cause such debate and consternation? Commencing with the writings of the Roman Catholic Jesuit Franciscus Ribera in the 16th century and resurfacing in the futurism of Darby's dispensationalism, this symbol describes a revival of the old Roman Empire in the form of a ten-nation confederacy in Europe. 1957 saw the creation of the European Economic Community, also known as the Common Market, and prophecy watchers went crazy. The ten-nation confederacy described by Daniel was surfacing right before their eyes. More fuel was added 
to the Prophecy Fire in 1993, when 27 member states formed an economic and political union that was known as the European Union. The only problem the dispensationalists had with their prophecy script is these unions had considerably more than 10 nations. Now dispensationalists watch Europe anticipating national merger or collapse that would prune down the original 27 member states to a 10-nation confederacy. Another piece to the prophecy puzzle fell into place on October 1st of 1949, when Mao Zedong proclaimed the creation of the People's Republic of China. Since this new national state was decidedly atheistic and communist, a new player in the apocalyptic game was added. In the ninth chapter of the Book of Revelation, a 200 million man army is described that will have the authority to kill a third part of mankind. Dispensational futurists interpret this part of the book of Revelation in a literal manner. They see a future massive army coming out of the East that will wreak havoc over Asia and Europe. Now that China went communist, the possibility for a murderous 200 million man army exists and prophecy watchers now hold their breath. Another piece added to the puzzle. dispensational prophecy watchers had one glaring problem with their theory. Israel needed to become a political nation again. The Belfort Declaration of 1917 stimulated excitement, but it did not solve the problem. Palestine was under the legal and political control of Great Britain, established by mandate of the League of Nations on July 24th of 1922. The British mandate for Palestine was scheduled to expire on May 15, 1948, and David Ben-Gurion proclaimed Israeli independence on May 14, thus creating the State of Israel. The United States extended official recognition after the first Israeli election on July 31st of 1949, and Israel became a member of the United Nations on May 11th of 1949. Dispensational prophecy watchers went crazy. The final piece to the prophetic puzzle was added. Nothing stood in the way for God's time clock to tick off the last days of planet Earth. Rapture watches sprung up everywhere. The restoration of the nation of Israel in 1948 started a prophecy frenzy, but Israel was not through shooting off prophecy fireworks yet. The year is 1967, and Israel was attacked by her Islamic neighbors. The war lasted for only six days, resulting in Israel's repulsion of all Islamic invaders. During the events of this war, Jordanian East Jerusalem was reunited with Israeli West Jerusalem, thus giving Israel total control of Jerusalem for the first time in nearly 1900 years. Didn't the Gospel of Luke foretell this event. Doesn't the Gospel of Luke predict that Jerusalem, the great city of Jerusalem, would be trodden down by Gentile armies until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled? Jerusalem is now in the hands of Israel again. Obviously, the times of the Gentiles is over and the last days have begun. Israel is just the prophecy gift that keeps on giving.
one week in August of 1945, filled the earth with stark horror. The United States destroyed the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan with two atomic bombs, thus ending World War II. Two bombs destroyed two cities, and the world changed forever. Mankind now stood on the precipice of total and complete annihilation. The nuclear age brought into focus the possible means by which the Antichrist and his minions could murder nearly one-third the population of the earth. Even though prophecy watchers were horrified by the massive destruction and death caused by these two bombs, they were giddy over the fact that the future of humanity was dark and bleak. This change in the world condition was good news for premillennial dispensationalism. The first half of the 20th century was an absolute prophecy windfall for dispensationalism and Schofield's script. All dominoes were in place for a major collapse of the world as we know it. Communist Russia and the United States engaged in a continued state of political conflict, military tension, and economic competition that became known as the Cold War. Cold War politics became Cold War prophecy.